This is What the Floor from TNA Supply Company, Inc., a podcast for the flooring industry. I'm Holiday Van Arum. And I'm Michael Gurria. We'll be exploring the hot topics of the flooring industry with a little humor and a new set of eyes. How's it going, Michael? It's going well, Holiday. How are you? I'm excited about today. Yeah, we got a guest. Yes, we do. We have uh, a brand new partner to TNA Supply. Tarket home and we have Mr. Jason Surratt with us. How are you doing, Jason? Doing well. Thanks for having me, Holiday. We're excited to have you. You're our first guest. Uh, it's an honor. <laughs> <laughs> Careful. <laughs> Might be the last one. <laughs> we're, we're honored that you'd let us uh, have you on. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so I'd like to have you introduce yourself. Why don't you tell us um, your role with Tarket and kind of how long you've been with them and, and where you're where you come from. Sure. Yeah. So, um, like you mentioned, my name is Jason Surratt, and I'm president over Tarket Home, which is Tarket's residential division. I've uh, been with the company for about eight months now, um, but longtime industry vet, uh, going on close to 20 years now. Started off um, out of school on the manufacturing side, uh, inside textiles and carpet uh, with Honeywell and Shaw. Moved over into product development uh, later on in my career with, with Mohawk for several years and then moved more into the uh, product management side, uh, starting with Phoenix Flooring um, and then stayed with them after the Mannington acquisition for a couple more years before uh, this great opportunity came knocking on my door. Wonderful. Well, you're a, an industry vet, bouncing <laughs> around all over the place like most deal. For sure. Can you go into a little bit of kind of who is Tarket and then why you've kind of been rebranding recently, I believe, to Tarket Home? Yeah, it was a, a little surprising uh, at the retail level um, how many individuals were, were just kind of unknowledgeable of, of just how big Tarket is. So, you know, Tarket as a corporate entity, we're actually the third largest foreign manufacturer in the world over 12,000 employees selling over a hundred countries um, and pretty much every single product category really have a, a, a strong um, uh, position, particularly on the um, sports side with, with turf and, and, and sporting fields. Um, and then, you know, domestically, for the most part, I think a lot of retailers hear Tarquette and they think uh, commercial. And so that was really kind of what drove us to coming out with the Tarket Home brand was softening the images and sticking uh, a little bit more uh, uh, brand presence around, hey, we also have this great uh, residential lineup. So we soft launched the Tarket Home name uh, back in the fall with the website release and then really unveiled that brand at Surfaces this year. Oh, that's great. So what should make customers want to do or certainly purchase, you know, Tarket products? What kind of separates you from some of your competition? I think, uh, you know, we are really going to be going forward product focused and we've done a really good job of some innovative uh, opportunities across different product categories throughout the years, um, be it uh, on the actual product side or the warranties and merchandising around those products that makes it easier to sell. You know, our ProGen product is one of the only products out there in the field that actually carries a, a, a true three seasons room warranty. And then in the, in the sheet side, um, we've really got a, a completely uh, different style of vinyl sheet than, than what's out there with this textile back, back product that just has unparalleled um, rip tear resistance and actually has a whole uh, moisture resistance uh, mitigation series uh, or uh, factors uh, on the true text line. That's awesome. So I just want to touch real quick on kind of why TNA supply partnered with Tarket and why Tarket, you know, wants to partner with TNA supply. I think uh, we have a lot of, a lot of things in common Tarket being an extremely old company. It's been around the industry for a very long time, mm -hmm. over 100 years. Um, you guys have facilities all over uh, the United States and in other parts of the world. Um, can you touch briefly on some of where are some of the manufacturing uh, facilities? Yeah. Um, so uh, specific to, to TNA, uh, most of that uh, or a lot of that is actually coming 
um, domestically or, or within North America. So the vinyl sheet's made right outside of Montreal in uh, Barnum, Canada, a uh, little province in, in Quebec. It's been there um, probably closer, if not over 100 years, starting in, on the linoleum side before uh, moving over into vinyl sheet. Um, and then our residential wall base, the Johnsonite products uh, that you carry from the commercial side all come out of Ohio, be it Chagrin Falls, Middlefield, kind of all the, the suburbs uh, of the Cleveland area. Uh, and then in Alabama, we have um, domestic LVT production. So really kind of smattered across product categories um, in, in multiple areas of the U.S. And then, of course, we've got carpet um, uh, right here in the carpet capital of the world, northwest Georgia. Yeah, so a lot of different product offerings, which is one of the reasons I think that TNA Supply felt really comfortable partnering with Tarcat. Uh, obviously, you've been a, a name in the flooring industry for a long time, so we felt comfortable working with you guys just by reputation alone. Uh, but having the opportunity to partner with a new manufacturing um, partner that has lots of different flooring options. Sheet vinyl was obviously something that we really needed to find yeah. a new partner for. Um, and you guys have a fantastic product and we'll talk a little bit more about exactly what the sheet vinyl program entails. Uh, but having some access to some new carpet options was really exciting for us. And then the luxury vinyl options too, the pro gen and new gen products. So I think we felt really comfortable saying yes to Turquette and, you know, looking for a new partner. And we've obviously worked with your commercial side for a long time and different facets and parts of our business. Um, so it just felt like a really great fit. And I, I think Turquette felt that same way. Would you agree? Oh, 100%. Um, you know, the reputation of TNA in the Pacific Northwest, we were looking um, for a new, new opportunity, new partner in the, in that region. And so where you were already doing uh, some business with the Johnsonite brand on the commercial side. It just felt like a natural fit. Um, and so far, we've been really pleased with the partnership. Mm -hmm. Great. So let's start with Sheet Vinyl and go a little bit deeper into what Turkit has to offer and then what TNA Supply is stocking and what our local programs are going to be. Um, so why don't you explain to us um, what does the sheet vinyl program cover? What kind of options do we have um, when it comes to what's in the displays? Um, and then we can kind of hit upon some of the products that TNA is stocking that maybe aren't in the displays. Yeah, so uh, the display is kind of set up um, with four major categories, kind of a, your good, better, best of your typical uh, vinyl sheet. Uh, I'd say our design team really is second to none. So you really got some on-trend, brand new design aesthetics and, and different stones, abstracts, and, and wood visuals. Um, and then one thing that I think the display part really uh, sets us apart compared to our competition is that textile back product that I, that I mentioned earlier. So True Tex, uh, rather than being your standard um, overall fiber product, has this um, almost like a needle punch type of material that's this textile uh, back and that allows um, customer. They can certainly glue it down, but if it's uh, loose laid, uh, it allows any type of moisture that was coming up, um, and particularly if you're in an area that that that's prone for for moisture problems, it allows that water to come in into that textile back and actually dissipate and go out across um, the loose laid product over towards the baseboards and then evaporate. So it's really unique solution um, that for a mold, mold uh, mildew uh, issues. Um, and it's something that, again, it's uh, kind of second to none out there on the market right now. Yeah, that product is really interesting to me. Is there any other product in the market that has that textile backing on it? Uh, the, the only one that I know is, is still our product. So we, we saw such great response from that, and that's a kind of a more higher-end luxury product that another one that, that you'll be stocking um, that's more geared towards multifamily, what we found after the, when we were really going after that mold and, and, and mildew issue is that that product just has superior tear strength. Uh, so we created a, a slightly thinner product that's uh, still got great uh, overall wear performance, um, but it, it comes in at a more affordable cost point, uh, cost standpoint so that we can have a, a good um, kind of top of the line multifamily product. And that, that collection is called Triton Tough. Mm -hmm. But as far as the rest of the industry, I'm aware of anybody else that has a product like ours. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's really. I just I really like the fact that everything's glass back. It makes that story really easy. Everything display can be installed with the same adhesive, with the same seam sealers. There's not a different story for different collections. But then you've got some of these cool upgrade options in the display with you know they have their own little story behind them. But I love that everything's fairly consistent, and you're you know you're walking through the whole display, and it's just upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. Yeah, with some great innovation. I mean, that's you know we're looking for that. We're constantly looking at how do we differ differentiate ourselves from our competition mm -hmm. uh, you know and products like that are, are just excellent for our market mm -hmm. it uh, it makes it makes it so easy as a sales rep to go in there show the retailer and the retailer to show the consumer you can roll up one of those two products and literally tell them like try to tear it I mean the tear right. strings mm -hmm. unparalleled so that they know they're getting a, a quality product that's going to perform well yeah I think we had <laughs> we had the samples that one out of the uh, market expo about a month ago and we had somebody who was trying to tear it apart and yeah. came pretty close but there was a lot of strength there <laughs> really riffing on it so it, it definitely stands up to that test I go back to the old school days. If they rip that, we've got to get the thick telephone book and see if they can do that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. And then yeah. we'll, we'll put them on the road as a sideshow. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so we've got a lot of different products that we're stocking for TNA's um, sheet vinyl in stock program. I think we're at like 45 SKUs that we've chosen across several different construction options. So we've got a couple of the true text items. Um, we've got custom prone starters. So those are, and correct me if I'm you know, miss saying anything, they're kind of your builder grade lower end products, but still glass back and 12 foot rolls. So it's still a really great product overall. And we've got a handful of those and then it works its way up from there. So we've got some fresh start items, uh, lots of easy living, which I feel like, can you kind of give us the specs quickly on easy living? It's kind of the best of everything right in the middle, isn't it? Yeah, it's like right in that better category. So you got a little bit better wear layer. It's got a little bit of um, more air kind of blown in. Mm -hmm. um, so you got a thicker cushion, good, great uh, under comfort as far as, as um, walkability on it. So it's just it like from from your bottom end up to, to the higher end um, with kind of the Cadillac of the series with the uh, Lifetime, mm -hmm. just right there, good good affordable price point with, with kind of the best of both worlds from a performance standpoint. Yeah. And you've got a lot of really great designs in that display too. Um, tell your design team that they're doing a fantastic job. Um, is there any products in our stocking program um that you think are just like the best visuals out there is there any specific ones that our our uh, customers and listeners should take a look closer look at yeah we just updated this um this last market uh there's a couple of newer products inside the true true text uh okay. series it's got a really great uh hex uh carrera marble mm -hmm. and then this kind of uh black slate uh black marble look to it so um really unique and then uh i believe y'all y'all are, are stocking inside of the uh easy living um there's a couple of encaustic tiles that mm -hmm. are just really nice fresh uh, on uh on trend product lines yeah, Jason, do you get involved with the design team as you guys are coming up with new products? What's your involvement with that? Yeah, so um, that, that's kind of been my background for the last 10 years. So while um, I certainly got a very, like you said, I, I feel like my design team, particularly on the sheet side, uh, second to none in the industry. So I don't want to get in their way and, and micromanage, but uh, at the end of the day, I love products. So uh, those are the type of meetings when we start looking at what's new and fresh and going to get ready to come out. That, that's when I get excited. Yeah, that's great. Uh, not to get too far ahead. When do you guys usually know what you're going to have coming out next? Are you now that, you know, the services market is over, are you starting now working on stuff for, for next year? Or it's going to be a little while before you guys start to really know what you're working on? Yeah, so we really uh, are in the process uh, since I came on board of building out a pretty robust product map so that we're mo more to three years down the road mm -hmm. with obviously a lot of wiggle room as, as design trends change or innovation and technology changes uh, when you start getting three plus years out. Um, 
but it's kind of right after surfaces. We've got an idea of maybe what we want to launch. Um, and then we're just kind of seeing there, are there any trends, uh, from competitors or, or trends and, uh, type of solutions that are being asked for from the marketplace. But basically just a few weeks after surfaces, we're, we're starting to get the ball rolling of what's going to be the next surfaces. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. I I love the, you know, as soon as you get that one big event done, surfaces, you're right off into the next one and you're, you just hit the ground running and you're going, going, going. It's no, exciting. and it's so true. I mean, it just, it takes time, right? Getting these new things uh, from conception to the market. And so you have to start early. In my former life, I did product uh, development as well. And it just, it, it's amazing how long it takes to really refine a product to where you can take it to market. Yeah. And by the time you add in, you know, one key thing that, that we do and are going to be doing it, you know, is, is getting out in front of your customers, getting out with you early on in the design process and getting that voice of customer feedback from, you know, multiple regions to understand really what, you know, there's a lot of things you can look at of design trends and you think this is going to be the next greatest thing, but then getting it out in front of the customer and getting that true feedback. Uh, that's how you know you, that you're going to have a successful launch. Yeah. I got a quick question about ha have you engaged the millennial generation or Gen Z? Is that a, are those generations you're looking at and looking to, to feed product into? Uh, certainly, uh, that's one where they're young and uh, it's interesting. We've been talking about sheep. That's one that they're young enough that they don't quite understand what the linoleum is. So there's not, we've seen kind of that generation start gravitating a little bit easier of wanting to adopt and bring in a sheep vinyl product because of the price point. Um, cause they don't have that stigma of their grandmother's linoleum mm -hmm. or something. Um, but it's interesting, uh, even from a merchandising standpoint, uh, there, there have been a few uh, color lines in the past that I've done of um, the way that their brains process things, uh, you know, growing up in the age of computers. And I can, even though I'm kind of borderline mm -hmm. of uh, Gen X versus that, is that rather than, you know, most people and particularly baby boomers, Gen X is, you know, you read left to right, top to bottom. Millennials, Gen Z is a center out approach. Um, so we, we've gone from, you know, you always kind of have lightest and then cascade to the darkest where we went like neutral in the middle and then like zoomed out from that. So they mm. like focus in and then blow out. And so it was interesting to do a couple of test markets the traditional way, a couple of other markets where um, we felt that our sales were coming out of millennials to see, you know, do we see an improvement there? Um, so it's definitely something uh, that that population is growing and now they're getting into a, an area of, um, you know, they're going to have income, disposable income to, to put towards home purchases and, and we need to make sure we've got the products and solutions for them. Yeah, that's a great question. I I know we've had conversations with customers um, as we've been trying to explain to them that we're bringing on Turk at home and here's, you know, what we're looking at, what we're stocking. Yeah, I, customers will I'm talking to them about sheet vinyl and, you know, first thing that they say, oh, we don't, shell, we don't yeah. sell any sheet vinyl anymore. <laughs> Hold on. Let me go through my spiel first. And then at the end, let's talk about whether you really sell sheet vinyl or not and why, if you are not, you should still be trying to because there is a whole nother generation of people out there who really don't know anything about linoleum and old school sheet vinyl. To them, it's just another flooring type, but that salesperson at the retail level, they have their own personal opinions about it. And, you know, sometimes that gets in the way of them selling a product. Yeah, when we were doing our road shows uh, back in January and February, we, we would, you know, walk them through the room. And, you know, of course, LVs were popular and laminate and wood. But I think one of the best responses we got was, you've got sheet vinyl. You know, we they were excited that we were back in the sheet vinyl game after uh, – about a week off, <laughs> you know, and that we had Tarket. It was a it was a big plus to a lot of our customers. They've come to rely on us to have a really good sheet vinyl line, be able to do local cuts, and and that's a big help. Yeah, and they were excited to hear that we were partnering with Tarket. Yeah, and that was, you know, it's always 
a little worrisome to tell them you're changing partnerships and what you're doing next and to have most people say, oh, Turcat, oh, I've sold it before. Mm-hmm. I know the products. I'm familiar with it. I to- I'm, you know, great reputation. I'm, I'm in. Just let us know what you're stocking. That was really great to hear that feedback right off the bat. It made you feel like you made the right decision. For sure. Yeah. You bet. Great to hear. Let's talk about some of the other products. So we are looking at a carpet program with you. Can you tell us a little bit about what you guys have um, coming soon for a distributor carpet program? Yeah, we're um, so this one's kind of exciting. Uh, we're looking at, at a more smaller, concise line so that, you know, you, you can stock there. And I think that's going to be the, the key critical uh, point of success for this is that, that most of the SKUs will be right there. Uh, on location uh, so that you can get it same day, 24 hours. And um, it's kind of going to have a gamut of a, a good, better, best um, in both textures and patterns. So uh, have some unique uh, tone on tone um, visuals. Uh, and like I said, it's several different weight constructions. Um, but really kind of trying to focus on, on good um, bread and butter every single day use. Um, both in patterns and textures, so your, your standard um, kind of little uh, cut, uncut grids, uh, diamond trellises, things of that nature, a uh, little uh, tone-on-tone strie, and then, again, those tonal, tonal uh, uh, cut piles where we've created this whole new fiber um, overall cross-section uh, within Tarquette for this program, so it's just got a really good, soft, but bulky hand, so uh, one of those you really want to sink your feet into when you when you get into those cut piles. He is saying all sorts of things that don't make Man, any sense went, to me. He went but, straight soft surface. <laughs> but no, it's fine. It's fine. I just don't, I don't have a lot of experience with carpet. So I'm actually really excited for us to have a new carpet program and to learn it from the ground yeah. up and really understand it really well. Um, but I did notice th- a thing that carpet people do, and you did this in particular, Jason, when you came to see us in person not too long ago, but they get their samples out and they start to rub them and scratch them and like flick all of the little, you know, little <laughs> yeah. pieces off. And it's, <laughs> it just cracks me up because nobody else has to do that with their samples. Maybe dust them off a little bit, yeah. but you know, there's just a lot of rubbing that happens <laughs> when it comes to looking at carpet samples. <laughs> Something we saw, you know, during the pandemic, it was very easy on the hard surface side to get product feedback and and still do a survey monkey or, or do these Zoom calls and, and look through. But there's just something about the depth and texture and carpet. Um, we did the same thing, and there were, you know, ones that I, we thought were just going to be clear number one winners graded out the very worst. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the ones that we thought were going to be duds graded out first. And I'm like, I, I just don't trust this. So right during the little dip where uh, COVID cases came down in 2020 towards the fall, we took them out and it completely inversed and went right back to mm-hmm. where we were thinking would be the best ones. And it just kind of validated of, okay, um, while technology's great and, and can cut down on, on travel and, and, you know, try to keep everything moving during the pandemic, when it comes to carpet, there's nothing like digging your hands into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's so much to be said about that with carpet, but also just life and business in general. I mean, yeah, you can do a lot over Zoom, but there's something about being in front of the customer, touching, feeling the things that you're purchasing. I, I often wonder that with internet sales of, of you know, hard and soft surfaces. It's just so hard to select off of, you know, a six inch piece or just something that you see online. I can buy a j- pair of jeans and return them if I don't like how yeah. they fit, but yeah. you know, to buy a whole floor is, uh, is another thing. So, mm-hmm. so let's, that kind of segues into a couple other questions I had about your website. So tarkathome.com, you guys have a lot of information. Can you, uh, give me a couple of highlights of things that our customers can utilize on the website to help sell product? Certainly, yeah. So we just unveiled that that uh, website in the fall with, with the new brand, and I think one of the key critical uh, things for the customer is the visualizer there on the uh, website. So you, we've got pre-stocked uh, room scenes, kind of by different uh, room type, kitchens, baths, living rooms, what have you. But also, uh, you can upload your own room, and, it, and it'll mask out the product that you have there, so you you can put our actual product onto the floor and then work through, you know, different layouts of that in, in, in that, uh, your own room. 
Uh, the other thing I think is just um, there's a lot of how tos of you know best practices for cleaning, best practices if you're if you're going the DIY route, um, and and really kind of try to help you walk through understanding how to best take care of your floor, um, which is. Uh, sometimes gets kind of buried underneath, but but the way that the website has those uh, front and center within the blog blog area, I think uh, really helps the consumer uh, feel comfortable uh, with with what they're getting and how to maintain that product. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. I thought there was a lot of a lot of information, all the spec sheets and data sheets that you need. Um, I. And it, I liked the fact that I could easily email it to myself instead of just downloading it. I could email it or send it to somebody else if I wanted to, too. So I thought that was great. And um, all the photos and the room visualizer seemed like it was a really easy tool to use, too. Yeah, I agree. So a couple other questions. Um, we didn't really talk about this yet, but this is something that it, um, I've been trying to tell customers about is the asthma and allergy certification. Can you tell us more about uh, what it is and why it's so important to Tarket? Yeah. So uh, in our sheet category, uh, we actually have uh, certified products that, you know, by the uh, asthma and allergy board that these products are, are healthy products from an asthma and allergy standpoint certified that they're, they're, pretty much guaranteed to um, help improve the overall uh, room space and, and when you have um, either uh, asthma or allergies that it's uh, not creating airborne uh, pathogens. So uh, there, there's uh, it's very rigorous test um, that includes understanding um, overall, you know, any type of off gas and VOCs of a product, but also uh, how it how it interacts with um, the overall airspace and, and helps to mitigate you know creating any of those uh, airborne particles um, from actually you know matriculating up in the air and potentially in your lungs. So um, very like I said, very very rigorous test and, and something that we're excited to be able to offer kind of the only product that truly is asthma and allergy um, certified. Yeah, that's great. I had a quick question that kind of plays into that. Where does Tarkett's passion for sustainability come from? You guys have a real great sustainability message. You guys are doing a lot kind of in that vein. Wh- where does that come from? Um, from I mean, I, I think it comes from the Taconic family. Uh, I think it's part, just been built into the heritage of Tarquette, but that, that is something that you're, you're certainly correct. Uh, uh, corporately, we are passionate about sustainability. And, you know, sometimes while, um, at least for the North American market, that, you know, it's not always top and center uh, from what the end consumer wants on the residential side. We know that that's the best thing for for the environment and for, for, um, you know, our community. So that's something that we're going to drive and, and strive to get better at across all of our product categories. So, um, you know, to, to pull out any type of, um, you know, red list or any type of potential harmful, uh, chemical. And, and we want to be as transparent and ha- have as little ingredients as possible within our products, uh, while still delivering a, a quality product that, um, performs across different attributes so it's uh it's an exciting type of uh kind of mantra to have for a company uh enjoy um you know trying to look at unique ways of, of solving solutions uh without using those type of chemicals or you know what we can do to to help conserve and and um create a product that has more uh recycled content and and be more more of a give more of a sustainable footprint within our uh, overall product portfolio. Mm -hmm. That's great. I love when companies have kind of an underlying mission or something that they feel very passionately about um, and just hearing how, you know, Turkhead, that's part of just who they are in general. How does it feel to work for Turkhead versus some of the other companies that you've worked for in the past? Is it does the company have a different culture that you're that you were really excited about joining? Is there other things that are just different about Turkhead? Yeah, I mean they're they're all been great companies. Uh, certainly not going to form out any of them, but I, I think each of them has their own little 
uh, unique culture. And a lot of times I think that's really uh, top down driven for, for Tarkett, you know, where um, cor our corporate headquarters is uh, right there, right outside of Paris. So being a European company, a um, little bit uh, different thought process uh, of the way things uh, are going around. So obviously sustainability is a much bigger priority even on the residential side in Europe. So that, that kind of is another reason how that kind of drives that sustainability message. Um, I've been really surprised, not that the other companies didn't have things like this, but uh, really at the forefront and continuously focused week after week uh, of trying to um, you know, share across every single group um, what's going on corporately and then really uh, particularly in this last week as I uh, forget if it's actual day or week but have, have been pushing like the diversity and inclusion so um, you know they're really trying to create a, a culture um, where you know it's almost more even though we're a really really large entity it's it's more family-esque and that um, you know we're passionate about our product we're passionate about the people that we work with as well. That's really nice to hear. Yeah, I it's love, very cool. I love those types of businesses, and it, it uh, probably one of the reasons that I continue to work for Tania Supply is that same family-oriented feeling, and you know, just making sure that everybody's aware of what's going on, and you know, we're all working on things together. So it's nice to know that we're working with a company that kind of has that same culture. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. Speaking of partnerships, uh, Turkhet Home specifically has been adding a lot of distributors over the last several months. Um, I'm curious what the what the goal is behind that. Obviously, you know, more people pushing your products, but do you guys have a specific um, target for number of distributors you want to work with? Are you how is the expansion, and are you continuing to do that past adding TNA Supply to that group? Yeah, I think if you look at it, uh, obviously we've made a lot of headlines. There's been a lot of press releases of, of new distributors. Um, what kind of gets lost in translation is the number of distributors that, you know, we're pulling the product from during that. So we've really looked to enhance the overall um, distributor that we're with. So looking for really um, strong distribution partners that are, you know, wanting to take that Tarket home product portfolio and, you know, it really be a mainstay brand for them that they're, they're pushing. Um, so I think we're, we're at the right mix of distributors now. I, I would say probably in the history of our residential uh, platform, we've never have had better national distribution than what we have right now so uh we're extremely excited for for them uh, along uh, obviously with with y'all as well of just how well the new distributors we brought on how quickly they've kind of adopted those products and, and are pushing them out on the street so we've seen a lot of success over the last nine to 12 months that's great absolutely that has to be exciting i mean just to be adding who you're adding you you know added some great names in the distribution realm so that's huge for the target business yeah it's like i said it's a kind of uh, going a different model than than where we were at previously so uh obviously it comes with its own unique opportunities but uh, we're seeing the fruits of, of that labor and and hopefully helps us really take off and, and grow to that next step steps uh, as we look at how these partnerships evolve over the next couple of years. Yeah. Anything uh, that we should be looking forward to for late 2022 going into 2023 that you want to talk about? And you don't have to, if you don't want to give it away, I just wanted <laughs> to give you the opportunity to. Don't, don't want to quite give it away. You know, that, that's uh, probably the seal of death. If I say, Hey, this is what we're coming <laughs> out with. Uh, there'll be some type of uh, snafu uh, throughout the product development cycle. That's fair. But, uh, you know, we're, we've got new, uh, innovative, exciting things pretty much across every single product category. So, um, right. you know, hopefully they all come to fruition right when we expect them to. But uh, that's the other thing of, you know, not putting all your eggs in one basket. So uh, we've got several different projects kind of lined up within each of the product categories so that uh, we'll be ready uh, come come this upcoming market season with, with some new exciting design visuals and some new uh, exciting innovation across uh, the different product categories. 
Ex- ex- exciting things to look forward to. Yes. Now, <laughs> we've changed um, our distributor rep here just recently uh, to David Lowe. And I know you guys were looking at hiring some other folks to help represent Turkey in this area. Um, where are you at with that? Do you Are you still looking for people to, to help us out? I'm wondering if our customers will be seeing new faces from Turkey in with our sales reps soon. Yeah, well, it's a uh, you know it's still a very challenging labor market, so we, we haven't quite nailed down that person yet. Um, but but we're looking to to add someone. Um, kind of how we set it up is we have a regional business manager, David Lowe. You mentioned that really kind of helps um, you know at the corporate level, and and he'll certainly uh, get out with the uh, DSMs or DSRs. But we really like to put a, a sales rep in that area that can help. Uh, with PKs, uh, help ride, ride along. And, and we, we've seen a lot of success by having more of our own uh, employees inside that distributor market. Just uh, kind of helps keep keep um, the overall target, you know, the different product features and everything fresh uh, at the top of mind for, for your guys. And, you know, kind of helps um, push maybe some uh, things that when you do the overall corporate training and, and PK, maybe something got lost in translation or forgotten when you're throwing so much stuff at them. So having that unique one-on-one time and seeing how they would sell our product to a customer, I think really helps your guys. Um, so they certainly can see at least uh, one person, if not uh, two people that will probably be adding underneath David uh, to help support your, your overall um, territory. That's great. Yeah. We love a little extra help out in the field. That's <laughs> always appreciated. <laughs> well, I think that's all the questions I got that I have. More. You've got one more? I got one more. I thought you might. I'm going to put you on the spot, so I hope that's okay. Oh, no. So I just, as I was coming up with some questions, I just wanted to throw out, give us one of the weirdest, funniest, or oddest things about the flooring industry. That's a good question. Um. Well, I mean, I, th- I think you just kind of, you can look at my career history. Where else, what other type of industry can you, you know, walk across the street? When I left Mannington, I was literally going to uh, a point in Dalton, and at that traffic light, I would turn right. <laughs> and so the following Monday, I'm turning left to go up to my new office uh, with Tarkett, and it was like, man, I hope by habit I don't turn right and, <laughs> and turn into the parking lot. So it's weird just how everything congested, and obviously Peacock Alley, the whole history and tradition of carpets, kind of how flooring got here. But um, it's kind of unique to this in- industry to, you know, everybody knows everybody, and everybody's kind of been with everybody at some point in time in their career no that's great that's absolutely true yes it is <laughs> yeah Gotta make sure you don't burn any bridges <laughs> you never yeah, know who you're gonna be working with for next sure. <laughs> yeah well hey jason we can't thank you enough for your time this was a, a really great thing to do and we appreciate you giving us as much time as you did yeah we i were. appreciate it uh happy to be your very first uh guest i i, I wear that badge of honor on the uh Brett, the Hitman Heart shirt. Yes. <laughs> yes. <All right. laughs> well, if this if this podcast lasts Almost like we, wore it. we're all good. <laughs> well, if, if this podcast lasts like we hope it will, we'll have you back for uh, maybe like our hundredth episode or something. <laughs> <That's perfect. laughs> all right. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. We really appreciate you having having you on. Um, we appreciate working with Turcat. Appreciate you working with us. Um, thank you so much. We appreciate y'all's business and hope to continue to do lots more. Yes. All right. Absolutely. You have a good evening. You too. Bye. Now it's time for Walk the Plank. <coughs> the segment where we debate some ridiculous pet peeve that only flooring industry professionals would understand but can't decide on. So today's topic for Walk the Plank, AC ratings. AC ratings. Yes. I love AC ratings. Do you? Yeah. Why? Well, I feel like they're underutilized, and I'm always a fan of the underdog. Mm-hmm. And they're a clear definition. There's a ranking of them. There's testing. It fits into a, a specific. It puts the product into a specific category and gives it a definition. Whereas some of our other, some of the other things we rate products with, mm-hmm. 
are pretty open-ended. They're not very specific. It's not maybe related to a test. For luxury vinyl, it's all about the millware layer thickness, yeah. which is completely ridiculous trying yeah. to use that. Uh, so for me, AC ratings are like a concrete thing that you can utilize to tell you how this product is going to perform. No, I think you made a really good point. One thing I learned as I researched them, because I, I kind of thought it was more uh, an abrasion test mm -hmm. on but as I researched it, it's much more than that. It's several tests to make sure that this floor meets that standard. Yeah, I didn't realize this that either. So okay. AC stands for abrasion class. Mm -hmm. But the test is five or six different tests that have to do with other things, uh, staining, impact resistance, exposure yep. to moisture, which I didn't realize at all that they were doing some kind of moisture testing. Yep. Um, exposure to heat and burns, and then the stuff that we think of, the sandpaper, yep. the chair yeah, feet, caster. that kind of stuff. Yep. I didn't realize that they're taking a five or six different tests and then ranking them and figuring out, you know, where, where it falls. Yeah, classifying it in where it falls. So AC ratings are, what, one to five, right? In the United States, mm -hmm. we rate them one to five. Um, I've never seen an AC one or two in the market. No, and I'm sure that there are, mm -hmm. but for whatever reason, AC1 is not a bad rating. It means that it's perfectly usable in a home, yeah. and it should just be used where you're going to have the least amount of foot traffic. Right. So I, I read a one um, classification of it was you know foot traffic, moderate foot traffic, so ideal for bedrooms, bathrooms, or closets. Okay. Well, that's a lot of the home. Yes, exactly. So yeah. why AC one's really not that bad of a rating, and it's AC zero is like if it doesn't pass the test, right. then you shouldn't be buying that product. But I think you only see it advertised if it's a three or above, which isn't a three isn't necessary for most areas of the home. You probably want a three in your kitchen, your you know living room, entryways, that kind of thing. Um, but a product with an AC one or two is perfectly fine for most, like your upstairs and all your bedrooms and your bathrooms. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, as we've launched some new products and they're AC five, customers get so excited about that. Uh -huh. But most of the time, these are going to be used in residential settings. Yeah, but mm -hmm. if the price comparison, though, right. for a product that's rated at an AC5 versus a product that, you know, costs the same and it's only an AC3, because mm -hmm. uh, like you said, you don't really see any that are listed as AC2 or 1, so you don't really know. Right. If you're getting the same abrasion class uh, or the same pricing for a better abrasion class, then why wouldn't you? Yeah, and one thing I didn't have time to research, and, and I would be curious if we would get an honest answer, is is there a significant price difference going to an AC1 mm -hmm. or an AC2, you know, versus we often talk about uh, the, the mill rating, as you, you talked about earlier, or the mill thickness. And, you know, a lot of our a lot of our uh, manufacturers say it's, it's a very little difference going from a 12 mil product to a 20 mil product, mm -hmm. even though customers think a 20 mil is so much better. Yeah. So is there really any cost savings or is that why everybody goes with an AC3 or above? Uh -huh. Yeah. So the thing that bothers me about AC ratings is that it's only utilized on laminate flooring. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like it could be utilized on so many other products and it would give you a way to compare them to each other. Right now you're trying to sell a laminate against mm -hmm. a luxury vinyl and you don't have any apples to apples comparison for that. You have right. a you know lifetime warranty or mm -hmm. you know you could try to compare them warranty wise, but the warranties really are, it's really hard to compare something there. Yeah. I did once see a graph that showed like an AC three is equal to a 12 mil and an AC five is equal to a 20 mil. Mm -hmm. But I would love to see hardwood incorporated into this. What yeah. if you could have a, a rating system like this? Maybe you use the AC system where you have hardwood laminate and LV all under the same, you know, rating system. So we can really compare, like you said, apples to apples and understand, hey, this is hardwood, so you're going to get an AC3. The laminate that you're looking at could be an AC5. Um, boy, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I think we need to find somebody to take that on and champion that. <laughs> okay. And <laughs> take AC ratings all the way. I, Unless I'm not understanding the tests, and there's some reason why the actual tests that are being performed could not be performed on a luxury vinyl or a hardwood, there's no reason why you couldn't use that testing for those types of products. 
Well, we're going on a mill tour here in a couple of weeks. We could ask the yes. LV factories why they can't use AC ratings exactly. or what tests are different. I um, mean, maybe get back to the yeah. listeners. Yeah, I think that'd be a great idea. So right. let's make sure we don't forget it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's bring this up at our meal tours. We're going to a couple different types of factories so we can bring yeah. it up at all of them and figure out why they're not utilizing it. Yeah, I think it'd be great. I, I was interested as I read different stuff. So the AC rating was developed by the European Producers of Laminate Flooring. It's called the EPLP, mm-hmm. you know, as a, as a way to determine durability and recommended usage. So, yeah, th- it's a fantastic rating system. I think it's as good or better than any that are out there in the flooring industry. I'd like to see it used more. Yeah. Yeah. Did you want to go through the kind of what the ratings are then and where they're suggesting using these products? Yeah, sure. I think that would be really helpful. So my my assumption is that, and I'm not going to throw any particular company under the bus, but I think pro- quite a few products that are sold at big box stores, mm-hmm. the low price range options, and obviously laminate because that's what they're doing this testing on, are yep. probably AC1 or 2. Sure. And those are perfectly suitable for residential installations. Yeah. And and again, the chart that I have here is, yeah, one and two, both suitable for moderate to general foot traffic and used in those spaces. You know, there's even say an AC2 could be used in kitchens. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. So anything, I feel like AC one and two have such a bad rap. Nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to mention it. If it's just an AC one, AC two, but that's perfectly reasonable for most people's homes. Yeah. So maybe it's more of a marketing story. Everybody's just pushed it to an AC three and, or again, like we said earlier, AC three is just to manufacture it to an AC three, you know, it's just as easy. It Uh, doesn't cost any more money. Um, And with the new improved locking systems, obviously that helps with water. Um, obviously technology and finish and, you know, the whole production line has improved. Uh, I think laminate's one of the most improved categories in the last 10, 15 years. Oh, for sure. People, yeah. I have, laminate has such a bad name that companies don't even want to call things laminate anymore yeah. for whatever reason. I, and I've never understood that cause I never had a bad impression of laminate as an outsider. And then coming into this industry, it was still popular when I started working in the flooring industry. But it seems like within the last five or six years, it's really as soon as the waterproof products came out, Mm -hmm. that's when all of a sudden people felt like they can't sell laminate anymore, which is so ridiculous, but has made the laminate industry increase their technology and change what they're doing and be more innovative. So I think that it's actually been great for the category. I just hope that people can embrace it more. It's a really great product. It is. I think it's one of the most durable products we have. If you have a uh, a home, you know, that has a busy lifestyle, you have kids, you have dogs and and, and different pets, uh, laminate is one of the best products, certainly for your dollar that you could purchase. Mm -hmm. And we've got a handful of laminates that are AC four and five. So, I mean, those are on your chart that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Where does it start commercial ratings? Yeah, commercial starts at AC4. Uh So, you have kind of light commercial at AC4, suitable for, you know, moderate traffic in commercial spaces. Obviously, offices, hotel rooms, cafes. And then, of course, AC5 being, Mm -hmm. you know, your most durable wear layer. And that's for heavy foot traffic, uh, public buildings, department stores, warehouses. I think the one thing you have to be careful about with laminate is... It's always a locking system. Yeah. So heavy rolling loads, wheelchairs, things like that don't do well uh, because of the locking mechanism. So it could hold up to the traffic, but you've got to be careful about uh, what's being used over the floor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm just thinking if I've got uh, for my own personal home and uh, like my kids on the soccer team. So I've got like 25 kids always coming in and out of my house mm-hmm. um, after soccer practice. Then uh, having an AC4 product for slightly <laughs> light commercial <laughs> traffic through my entryway is probably reasonable. I think you'd be just fine. <laughs> I probably could do with a lot less than that. Yeah. Well, I think we've decided we love AC ratings. Yes. I think it's a no-brainer, and we love them so much that we're going to get everybody else in the industry to start utilizing them for everything. Deal. Absolutely. Okay. It's set in stone. You've heard it here now. What the Floor is a TNA Supply Company, Inc. original production. You can find out more about us at tasupply.com or tasflooring.com. 
This show is produced by Jose Morales with help from Tony Collier and Jessica Reiser. Hosted by Holiday Van Arum and Michael Garia. Tell us what you think of the show by emailing us at wtfpodcast at tasupply.com or on social media at hashtag whatthefloorpodcast. WTF.